Lord, a bill from the National Assembly, a bill by Honorable John Murigi, is also another bill that the House will be debating this morning. The Information and Communication Technology Practitioners Bill, a bill by nominated MP Godfrey Osotsi, Bill number 38 of 2020, is also another bill that members of Parliament will be discussing and deliberating on this morning. The National Construction Authority, a bill by Nakuru Town Member of Parliament, Honorable David Gikaria, is a bill at the second stage. The Children's Amendment Bill, Bill number 46 of 2020, and the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, an amendment bill, Bill number 1 of 2021, by Nandi Hills Member of Parliament, Honorable Alfred Ketel, is also a bill that members will be making input during this morning sitting. Finally, the National Government Constituencies Development Fund, an amendment bill by Butere Member of Parliament, Tindi, Mwe, Tindi Mwale, is a bill that has also been lined up for debate during this morning session. And so is the Whistleblowers Protection Bill, Bill number 50 of 2021 by Honorable Irene Kasalu. Pass on to standing orders number 42A, subsection 5. Four members of parliament will be fielding questions for reply before the various departmental committees. And taking the lead is Honorable Member for Jomvu, Honorable Badi Twalib, who will be asking the Cabinet Secretary for Lands and Physical Planning. That could the Cabinet Secretary explain why Mr. Salem said a resident of Maganda Village in Miritini Ward in Jovu constituency mm -hmm. is yet to be compensated for the land compulsorily acquired by the government on the 6th of June, year 2015? And this was to pave way for the construction of the standard gauge railway, despite the land having been valued, and an award letter of 664 million shillings issued. The member for Jomvo will equally be seeking to understand what measures has the ministry put in place to ensure that Mr. Salim receive compensation and could the cabinet secretary also provide the timelines for the payment and finally what measures has the ministry put in place to ensure that the payment is made promptly considering that there have been numerous similar cases in maganda village and across the country which have been delayed questions by honorable member for jomvo will be replied before the departmental committee on matters lands and physical planning His counterpart from Magarini, Honorable Michael Kingi, will be asking the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture what measures has the Ministry put in place to ensure that food harvested at the Gelana Kulanu farm directly benefits local communities as part of the farm corporate social responsibility. And considering the current severe drought being experienced in Magarini constituency, which has led to, among other things, school-going children dropping out of school, could the ministry consider commencing a feeding program for schools in the constituency using produce from the Galana Kulalu farm? Questions by Honorable Member for Magarini, Honorable Michael Kingi, will be replied before the Departmental Committee on Matters, Agriculture and Livestock. Member for Usoga, Alego Usonga, Honorable Samuel Latandi, will be asking the Teacher Service Commission to explain why Mr. Ruben Omondi, a former teacher at Madede Primary School in Alego Usonga, was irregularly dismissed from the service. Questions by Honorable MP for Alego Usonga will be replied before the Departmental Committee on Matters Education. Honorable Moses Cheboy is the chamber signaling that the business of the house is starting now. I'm now handing over for the live broadcast. Enjoy your feeling. Good morning. Eo mwenyezi mungu, ambaye kwa heki manawema wako, umeteua nyathi faza viongozi na mabunge, kwa ustawi wa jamii na utawala wa haki wa anadamu. Tukusi, tuchazame kwa neema nyingi, sisi watumishi wako, ambaye umeridhika kutuita, ili tuchekeleze shuguli muhimu za jamu huu.
Order members, uh, we are short of the required numbers, therefore I order the bell to be rung for 10 minutes. The Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Moses Chiboy, currently presiding over the business of the House this morning, has directed that the quorum bell be rung for 10 minutes. And this is to allow for more members access the chamber to allow the House transact business this morning. There being a full entry for members during this particular session, where a couple of bills have been lined up for debate. In the highlights in the order of business this morning, the MP for Alego Usonga, Samuel Atandi, besides asking the Cabinet Secretary, or rather the Teacher Service Commission, about the payment of a former teacher at Madede Primary School, We'll also be asking the TSC to explain why it is yes to reinstate Mr. Owino to the service, even after the magistrate court a sitting in Siaya acquitted him on the 29th of June, the year being 2018, for the accusations by the Teacher Service Commission on the basis of lack of evidence. Could the Cabinet Secretary also provide timelines when the Commission will reinstate Mr. Wino back to the service? And finally, could the Commission avail measures that TSC has put in place to ensure that Mr. Ruben Omondi Owino is paid all the accrued remunerations? This is from March 2018, when he was irregularly interdicted from the service. Questions by Honorable Sam Watandi, Member for Alego Songa will be replied by the Chairperson Teacher Service Commission. Member for North Menti, Honorable Rahim Dawood, will be asking the Cabinet Secretary for Treasury and Matters Planning to explain why Mr. Augustine Mugwika, a retired teacher and a resident of North Menti constituency, has not been paid his pension dues for the months of January to May, the year 2020, and March 2021. Honorable Rahim Dawood will also be seeking to understand what measures is the ministry putting in place to ensure that Mr. Augustine Mugwika is paid his dues, and this is including interest, if any. His questions will be replied before the Departmental Committee on Matters Finance and National Planning. Member for Butere, Honorable Tindi Mwale, the House will be debating his bill this morning. And further bills to be deliberated by the House this morning is the Health Amendment Bill, a bill by Honorable Ali Swahome, Bill Number 28 of 2020, the Institute of Social Workers Professional Bill, a bill by Honorable Joshua Kimilu, is a bill at the second stage. The Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 34 of 2020, is also a bill that the House will be deliberating on this morning. And the bill is by Honorable Richard Tongi. Honorable Danson Mwakwomna, who has sponsored the bill on the Alcoholics Control Bill, Bill number 35 of 2020 is also another bill 
that will be debated by the House this morning. A key in the highlights this morning is a bill by Nambale Member of Parliament, Honorable Sakwa Bunyasi, that seeks to establish the Debt Management Authority Bill, the Debt Management Authority. And the House will, for two hours this morning, be debating that particular bill. And in the event the House passes that particular bill, the National Treasury's Public Debt Management Authority will then be replaced should the MPs enact that particular law establishing a semi-autonomous authority to manage public debt. The bill by Nambale Member of Parliament seeks to establish the authority to implement the government's borrowing policy and minimize matters cost. The bill also provides that the authority will maintain a register of all, all, all loans advanced to the national as well as to the county governments. The Debt Management Authority, according to the proposals in the bill, is that it will be managed by a board comprising of a chairperson appointed by the President, Treasury Cabinet Secretary, the Attorney General, the Central Bank of Kenya, and the CEOs of the Capital Markets Authority, the National Security Exchange. Also, the Accountants Organization, ICPAK, the Kenya's Bankers Association, Kenya Private Association, as well as the Law Society of Kenya, will also nominate each person to sit at the board. According to further proposals in the bill, is that the authority will also assist county governments in managing their debt and will be run by a director general appointed by the board. The bill further seeks to regulate reckless borrowing by the state, and this is owing to the trillion of shillings in the public debt at the moment. The House will equally be debating a couple of bills from the Senate. And just to mention a few is the coffee bill by the chairperson departmental committee on matters members, agriculture uh, we still don't and have the numbers so i proceed to add five minutes as per our standing orders we are allowed to do that so uh, five minutes it is to see if we could raise the numbers Uh, the House is yet to get to at least 50 members to allow for it to transact business this morning. And the Deputy Speaker, Honorable Moses Cheboy, has further added five minutes. And this is passed on to standing orders of the House, number 35. And the additional five minutes will allow more members to make their ways into the chamber and make their input in regards to the business of the House this morning. The Criminal Procedure Code Amendment Bill Number 41 of 2020 by Honorable Nelson Koech is also another bill lined up for debate before the floor this morning. According to Standing Order Number 34 on the quorum, 
at the commencement of the House, subsection 2, is that if there's no quorum present when the chair is taken, a time will be appointed, which has already been appointed 10 minutes, immediately after saying the prayer, and a further additional five minutes will be given upon the expiry of 10 minutes. And if upon the, the lapsing of the five minutes, there's still no quorum present, then the speaker shall adjourn the house forthwith and to the next sitting. And so you are waiting to see whether the National Assembly will raise at least 50 members to allow it to transact business this morning, after which if the House is unable to raise that particular number, which is the requirement, pass on to the guidelines and directives in adherence with matters COVID-19, then the Deputy Speaker will have no other plans other than adjourning the House until afternoon sitting when the house is again set to sit during today's business. Members of Parliament continue making their way into the chamber to allow the house raise that particular key number to allow it to transact business this morning. The National Government Constituencies Development Fund, a bill by Honorable Tindi Mwale, Bill number 34 of the year 2021 is also another bill that members of parliament will be debating this morning. The Sexual Offences Amendment Bill, Bill number 24 of 2020 by Honorable Gadoni Wamushomba. is a bill that members of parliament will be debating on this morning. The chief whip in the National Assembly, who happens to be member for Navajolo, Honorable Emma All right, uh, Honorable members, we can now start business. Okay. Order number one, administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. Order number five, papers. Uh, the leader of majority, actually the deputy leader of majority. Put me on. Pro proceed, you have the microphone. Mr. Speaker, I like uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to read the following papers on the table of the House uh, today, Wednesday, 23rd of uh, February 23rd, 2022, the morning city. One, the report of the Auditor General and the financial statements in respect of the following institutions for the year ended 30th June 2021. Order, Honorable Sankok. Honorable Sankok. Order, Honorable Sankok. Honorable Sankok. Send Please him out. Take, take your seat, Honorable Sankok. And, uh, you know, yeah. Please, don't, uh, I will not allow you to, to violate uh, social distancing rules. And then circumstances. So, Honorable Sankok, you might need to move a little further from your colleagues. Yes, that's better now. Proceed, Honorable. Back, yeah. Yes, and any consultation, there is quite some consultation revolving around the member for Nandi Hills. Quite a lot of consultation. Now, do it in low tones. Yes. We do not have a problem with consultations, but they should be in reasonable decibels. I beat myself. Mr. Speaker, sir. I beg to lay the following, uh, following papers on the table of the House today, Wednesday, 20, uh, February 23rd, 2022, morning sitting. Re one, reports of the Auditor General and the financial statements in respect of the following institutions for the year ended 30th June 2021 
and the certificate therein. Revenue statements of the state, o, state law office and department of justice. B. Revenue statements of the business registration services. C. National Council for Law Reporting. D. State Law Office and the Department of Justice. E. Independent Electoral, Co Electoral and Boundaries Commission, Stub Mortgage and the Car Loan Scheme. And F. State Department for Broadcasting and the Communications. Two. Reports of the Auditor General and the financial statements in respect of the following institutions for the year ended 30 June 2020 under the certificates therein. One, Mino A, University of Edward. B, Ted and Kimathi University of Technology. C, Kiyata Veterinary Service uh, Vaccines uh, Production Institution. D. Kenya, Kenya, of, Kenya Sese and Trasnomonosias uh, is Trasnomonosias. Trasnomonosias is Eradication Council. E. Bathroom <laughs> Processing Company of Kenya. F. Kenya Plant, Kenya Plant Health and Inspectorate Services, and G, Southeastern Kenya, uh, Kenya University. Three, reports of the Auditor General and, and the financial statements in respect of the following institutions for the year ended 30th June 2019 and the certificate theory. A, Roraisa Water and Sewerage Company Limited. B. Eten Tambach Water and Sewerage Company Limited. C. Lake Basin Development Authority. D. Moy Teaching and River Hospital. E. Weru. Technical, Institute, uh, technical Training Institute for 18, in brackets 18, month period ended 30th June 2019. Four, reports of the Auditor General and financial statements in respect of the following constituencies for the year ended 30th June 2020, and the civil theory. A. Yata. B. Mwala, C. Kinangop, D. Mogoshio, E. Baringo Central, F. Sotik, G. Orochororok, and H. Bamen Central. Five. Report of the General and Financial Statements of Rongai constituency for the year ended 30th June 2019 and the certificate therein. Six, reports of the Auditor General and Financial Statements respective of the following institutions for the year ended 30th June 2018 and the certificate therein. A, Moibeni Technical and Vocational College. B, Hamed Shahame Mwadani Technical Training Institute. C. Mulaga Technical Training Institute. D. Orolaisa Water and Sewage Common Limited. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I put this there. Very well. So we. Go to the next order. No, we have the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Communication, Inf Information, and Innovation. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Okay, well, we will sort out the issues of approval later. So, but is he in here? Put off this, this mic. Put it off. The ch well, I'm sure she would be ab absent. So we can we can let it for another, maybe tomorrow, actually tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon, not today. We might not get her. Oh, the vice chair, you wanted to say something on it? Thank you. But, but sorry, uh, let's confirm first. Just a minute. All right, proceed, if you can. Th Thank you, that? Speaker. And is that... Is that uh, this is a member of Boni, Erastas Kivasu, and Zioka. I see it's Honorable Kivasu, uh, as a member of the committee, because you are not the vice chair. Yes. Okay, proceed. Thank you, Speaker. The following paper on the table of the House. Today, Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, morning sitting. Report of the Departmental Committee on Communication, Information and Innovation on its consideration of the Copyright Amendment Bill 2021, National Assembly Bill Number 44 of 2021. Thank you, Speaker. All right. Uh, we then go to the next order. Order number six, notices of motion. Order number seven, questions and statements. All right, under this particular order, there are two segments. One is the matters of questions, and the second one is uh, statements. Now, on the first segment, uh, the question by the member for Alego Usonga, and that by the member for North Imenti, the Honorable Abdul Rahim Dawood, are both deferred on their own request, which, 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 which I accept. So they are deferred. So we will go to the questions for the member for Jomvu, Honorable Twalib, give him the mic. Honorable Twalib. Just be patient, Honorable Twalib. You are being, uh, your mic issue is being sorted. Yeah, you have it now next to you. Yes. <coughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to ask question number 15 of 2022 to the Cabinet Secretary for Lands and Physical Planning. Question number one, Mr. Speaker, could the Cabinet Secretary explain why Mr. Salim side of ID number 225-4872, a resident of Maganda Village in Meritini Ward, in Yomvu constituency is yet to be compensated for his land compact. You have it. You have the mic. Okay, Mr. Speaker, I will start it again. Mr. Speaker, I rise to ask question number 15 of 2022 to the Cabinet Secretary for Lands and Fiscal Planning. <clears throat> question number one, Mr. Speaker, could the Cabinet Secretary explain why Mr. Salim Said? of ID number 2254872, a resident of Maganda village in Meritini Ward in Yomvu constituency, is yet to be compensated for his land compulsory acquired by the government on 6th of June 2015 to pave way for the construction of the standard gauge railway despite the land having been valued and an award letter for a total of 664,000 125 issued. Question number two, Mr. Speaker, what measures has the ministry put in place to ensure that Mr. Salim Said receives the compensation and could the cabinet secretary provide the timelines for the payment? And lastly, Mr. Speaker, what measures has the ministry put in place to ensure that the payment will be prompt considering the numerous similar cases in Maganda village and across the country which have been delayed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, that one will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Lands. Next is a member for Magarini, the Honorable Kingi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to ask num uh, question number 48 of 2022 
directed to the cabinet secretary for agriculture, livestock and fisheries. One, what measures have the ministry put in place to ensure that food harvested at Galana Kulalu farm directly benefits local community as part of the farm's corporate social responsibility? Two, considering the current severe drought being experienced in Magarini constituency, which has led to, among other things, school-going children dropping out of school, could the ministry consider commencing a feeding program for schools in the constituency using produce from the Galana Kulalu farm. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Very well. That one will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock. So we go to statement requests. And I see there are two. We will start with the, the request. Is the committee chair on finance, national planning in the house and prepared? Oh, yes. So let's have the Honorable Bombogo. Never mind the fact that probably the the chair or the vice chair of, the, of that particular committee on finance are absent, but uh, the record will do the necessary and have them informed that they need to... Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I stand to seek for a statement, Honorable Speaker. Pursuant to the provision of Standing Order 442C, I wish to request for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning regarding compensation of 128 oil marketing companies by the government. Honorable Speaker, since November 2021, 128 oil marketing companies have not been paid their dues due to the, uh, to the tune of Kenya shillings at 8 billion by the National Treasury. The matter came about due to the increased fuel prices by the government that were experienced mid last year. Whereas the government intervened and took to cushion the consumers by subsidizing the increased pump prices. The said and paid dues has put a lot of strain to the oil marketing companies who had borrowed loans from the banks, and the situation has worsened even further due to high interest rates being charged on the borrowed loans. Honorable Speaker, since the introduction of VAT to fuel products, oil marketing companies are required to remit VAT to KRA once an invoice is raised. To date, the said invoices raised to the uh, National Treasury have not been paid yet, VAT has to be remitted to KRA without delays. It is notably that 123 out of the 128 oil marketing companies, Mr. Speaker, are Kenyan-owned, and their collapse would uh, be a det detriment to many Kenyans currently employed by those uh, companies. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning on the following. When will the ministry pay the Kenya shilling that 8 billion to the said oil marketing companies? Two, could the Kenya Revenue Authority consider suspending the collection of VAT from the oil marketing companies until they are paid their dues? And lastly, Mr. Speaker, what long-term plans does the ministry have to aid in cushioning the public from the high fuel prices? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. That one is referred to the Committee on uh, Finance and National Planning. Then we go to the member for NDBES, Honorable Dr. Pukose. Robert. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 442C, I rise to request for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Energy regarding suspension of Kenya Power staff under unclear circumstances. Honorable Speaker, in the recent past, the Kenya, Power, the Kenya Power Board of Management has suspended several officers under obsecure circumstances. For instance, in November 2021, 
the board suspended 59 supply chain staff ostensibly to pave way for a forensic audit and review of the supply chain function. Further, in December 2021, the board also sent home five general managers on a 60 days compulsory leave in what it claimed was a move to facilitate forensic audit and conclusion of the review of the supply chain operations, which entails lifestyle audits of the said suspended staff, among others. Honorable Speaker, in addition, following the collapse of the transmission towers on Kiumbere Mbakasi high voltage transmission line on 11th January 2022, which resulted in a countrywide blackout, the implicated staff were summoned by the Directorate of Criminal Investigation to record statements on alleged cases of negligence and sabotage involving the collapse of the transmission towers. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek a statement from the Chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Energy. In the statement, the Chairperson should address the following. One, what are the specific reasons for the suspension of the state officers and confirm that the suspension was carried in accordance with the employment and labor laws? Two, could the chairperson provide a status report regarding the ongoing review of the supply chain function and forensic audits, which necessitated compulsory relief and suspension of the said staff? Three, could the chairperson provide information on the team undertaking the lifestyle audit or fitting exercise of the said suspended staff, including their qualifications, and explain the procedure used to audit or fit them to ensure that the process is done in an open and transparent way. Four, could the chairperson avail details on the recent changes in the company's top management, if any? Uh, lastly, which is five, could the chairperson state measures put in place by the board and the ministry to ensure that staff have a conducive working environment free from threats and limitation occasioned by the suspensions and the ongoing investigations by the Directorate of Criminal Investigation. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Very well. That is referred to the relevant departmental committee, which is the Departmental Committee on Energy. Now we go to the, the next order. What is it, Honorable Kater? Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you for the... Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise uh, to seek your indulgence on a matter that was raised on uh, more than 14 days of, I mean, two weeks ago uh, by Honorable Francis Kimani Kuria, the Member of Parliament for Molo Constituency, uh, passed one to the provisions of Standing Order 44.2. He rose to seek a statement uh, from the Chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock regarding the current high cost of fertilizer in the country. Mr. Speaker, again, as, um, it is against that background that I want to seek your indulgence and, more importantly, the response from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock, because this is a very emotive issue. At the moment, the rain is season has started. Farmers are preparing to get to the farms. Currently, the prices are more than 6,000 per bag of uh, fertilizer, which is very, very expensive. And uh, considering that it is already the production of uh, most uh, agricultural products is already very expensive, Mr. Speaker, and this will increase further the cost of production, meaning it will cost farmers uh, a lot in terms of uh, the, 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 the cost of uh, production, and it will affect food productivity. And I know one of the big four is for food uh, security. Mr. Speaker, I want to seek your directions and indulgence on that matter. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, uh, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, well, it, first of all, it is a, an extremely uh, critical issue. Uh, I, can see, I can see quite a number of members are putting their uh, intervention slots here. But, uh, but, but before, before I give the chair, Departmental Committee on Agriculture, Honorable Tire, whom I see is in the House, I would rather give a few members to ventilate on it because it's a, a real topical matter. The only problem is I do not know how I'm going to share it out. But if members can speak briefly, we will, we will be able to get many members speaking. So I will start with the, the, the Honorable Dr. Wamalwa. Then I come, I pick two members from this other side, then come another. I, I will give about seven to eight members. Yes, we, 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 and please let's be brief. brief. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I want to salute Honorable Keter for raising up this matter, and I'm happy the chair of the Committee on Agriculture is on board. Mr. Speaker, this is a critical moment where farmers are preparing their fields to plant, and fertilizer being one of the main inputs, Mr. Speaker, as we speak right now, the price per bag is costing about 7,000 Kenya shillings. Mr. Speaker, is beyond the reach of the majority poor farmers. And the government being the first line of defense, Mr. Speaker, is supposed to look into this matter. Mr. Speaker had an opportunity to have looked at the BPS. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, there was no provision for the fertilizer. Because the BPS, Mr. Speaker, provides the key priority areas where the government is supposed to provide budgets. How I wish, Mr. Speaker, as you are in the House today, this is a matter that should be handled with urgency, Mr. Speaker, so there is that provision of fertilizer, Mr. Speaker, in the BPS. Mr. Speaker, as the Jubilee government comes to its end, Mr. Speaker, it is indeed important as we prepare this budget. This budget, Mr. Speaker, is mainly going to be for the new government. It's only God who knows which one is going to be the new government? No, but on matters of fertilizer, Mr. Speaker, yes, it cuts across. Fertilizer. Absolutely. Yes. And, and uh, I'm talking and, about and the BPS. So that I give a few more minutes. Exactly. So, Mr. Speaker, how I wish that we could move with speed, even if it's going to be in a supplementary budget, Mr. Speaker, that this fertilizer can be provided for the farmers as quick as possible. Because as we speak, Mr. Speaker, it has started raining. And when it starts raining, Mr. Speaker, very soon it will be planting season. So I humbly request the relevant powers that be, Mr. Speaker, to move okay. with speed to provide subsidized fertilizers okay. to the farmers, Mr. Okay. Speaker. I thank you. Member for Kipkeli on West, then I'll come, uh, I'll pick quite some members. So Kipkeli on West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm trying to look at those members, especially from the fertilizer consuming areas. I yes. see the Honorable Kutuin, I see the Honorable Kukose, I see, I see quite a number of members. If you are going to be brief, we are going to be giving quite a few members. Thank, two minutes. Two minutes. Th th thank just, you. Just a minute each. Honorable thank, member. Thank you. Kilian. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the Honorable Keter for raising this urgent and important matter. Mr. Speaker, we live in a very dangerous time in this country, where everything that is directed to our farmers are, is not the priority of this government. This government has money to refurbish stadiums. This government has money to do all the lofty, even including uh, build, putting up a gun factory, but they don't have money for fertilizer subsidy to our farmers. Mr. Speaker, and we live at a time and under a president who has become so rogue and is in every other time he appears on TV, he cheats the public. Mr. Speaker, you remember we, the president once said that uh, uh, the cost of energy will come down. Nothing has happened. He once said that farmers' uh, inputs on dairy, farm, dairy feeds will come down. Nothing happened, Mr. Speaker. And now, even as we address this issue of fertilizer, we, we have a report your, that, what's your point of order on Mr. The Speaker, language? there is an addendum or, removing. Order, order, order. Thank you, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Actually, I'm surprised, Honourable Wangwe, because I wanted to give you to substantively contribute. So this point of order. My it, point of. Honorable Speaker, my point of order should not sub, sub, uh, subdue the substantive contribution, but my very good friend, we are debating the issue of fertilizer, but he's bringing in a debate on the president. Is he in order, Honorable Speaker, that uh, Honorable Kosgei debates the president? 
restrict yourself, restrict yourself to the fertilizer issue, the honorable member for Bukelion. If there is anything you wanted to say, you say. So let's let's go to fertilizer. Mr. Speaker. Yeah, please finalize. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, thank you. We cannot, we cannot address this issue in isolation, Mr. Speaker, but however, I want to say that there is already an addendum from the Budget Committee removing even what was allocated and requested by the committee for purposes of this fertilizer input. And we are saddened that nobody else can remove that, Mr. Speaker, if it is not the rogue state under the president. Okay, that, is, that should be enough. Let's have the. Let's go to the Honourable Kutui, uh, the 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 majority whip. You had had a shot on uh, that bit. I'll give you some breathing time. Yeah. I'll well, get other members first, then come back to you. Congo is missing. Uh, uh, order. Speaker. Order. Yeah. Order, Honourable Kutui. Parliamentary language. Oh. Order. Oh. Okay. I, I could not understand the language you just spoke. Asante. Asante, Bwana Mwenyekiti. Mwenye kiti najikuwa hii fursa kumshukuru sana mweshimua keter kwa kuleta hoja hili ndani ya bunge. Hakuna taifa lelote ambale linaeza kupiga hatua isposingatia ukulima. Na waswaili wanasema kila muambangoma uvutia upande wake. Lakini nataka kusema wazi kwa mba sisi tunavutia upande umu ingine. Leo na amuka na masikitiko. Kwa sababu bajeti ilikuwa imetengenezwa na ikawe kwa pesa ya kutosha ya kupunguza harama ya fertilizer ama mbolea. Lakini kwa mkia leo kwamba wizara tena imetuma tarifa nyingine ya kutoa hiyo pesa ambaye ilikuwa imerasibiwa. Mimi nataka kumuomba mwenye kiti na kamati kwa ujumla waitupilie mbali. Ombi la serikali kuu ya kuondoa pesa ambayo ilikuwa imetengea kupunguza bei na harama ya fertilizer ama mbolea. Wakulima wako tayari kuenda mashambani. Wengi wa Kenya kwa sasa hawana chakula. Lakini serikali inazembea haijaweka mikakati ya kutosha. Kwa hivyo mimi ninataka kwamba serikali kuu kabla hatujakata kauli ya kutoa msimamo wetu waweze kutoa taarifa Ya jinsi mikakati imewekwa ya kusaidia mkulima hili yaweze kupata mbolea kwa bei na fuu. Asante. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the genesis of cartels who want to import maize begin with the production, Honorable Speaker. This is a sign that cartels have penetrated treasury. And Honorable Speaker, as the government, we should not support any proposal which is going to bring down our government just because cartels have penetrated treasury. Honorable Speaker, if production is not checked, it means we are going to import maize. And when we import maize, Honorable Speaker, it means at the end of the day, we are going to increase the cost of production and everything is not going to work for the country. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, we want to advocate that we bring down, we make sure the amount that was allocated as for the import of fertilizer remains in the budget. We have to support it so that, Honorable Speaker, we don't want to see the cost of fertilizer being remaining 7,000 to the farmers. Instead, it has to come down because, Honorable Speaker, that's the only way to support our people. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I want to thank uh, Honorable Kater for the efforts of uh, making sure that we have this statement before the Parliament. I also want to uh, thank Honorable Wangwe for accepting that there are uh, cartels in Treasury um, or in government, especially Treasury. Uh, you should actually uh, move forward, actually, and name them. Mr. Speaker, we can't wait much longer. Rains are now are with us. We require the prices of maize to come down, not today, like, but like yesterday. Mr. Fertilizer, Mr. Speaker, in most cases I have been on this floor advocating for the interest of uh, CDF. Today I am here for the farmers, Mr. Speaker, so that the fertilizers can actually come down. If this government can't listen to us, if this government cannot listen to farmers, 
the supplementary that will be here on Thursday or tomorrow afternoon, Mr. Speaker, I'll make sure it all will, I'll convince my colleagues that the, the old supplementary budget will go down. Mr. Speaker, it's not a threat. It's a uh, statement uh, I'm, I'm, I'm issuing before this floor. I'm a farmer too, and I actually want the, uh, the prices, prices to go down. Mr. Mr. Speaker, watch me tomorrow. You're, you're, you're I, have, uh, I, I, I have many friends in this, uh, in this floor, Mr. Speaker. I have friends that are also farmers. Member for Gilgil. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think the outcry cuts across the constituencies, cuts across the country. Yesterday I was in a place called Songoloi, and even if you're doing a meeting for bursaries, people are asking. We don't even need you to give us bursaries. We need to farm because we can, but we cannot afford fertilizer. And there is no cartel in this country, Mr. Speaker, that the government cannot demolish. So we hope that this can be done, and we agree and we support Honorable Keter in terms of the need to bring the cost of fertilizer down, and we hope that all these cartels that have been picked by the leadership of the House can be demolished because the government is the government. So we hope that the addendum will be supported across the parties regardless of what party one supports because this, we cannot lower the food prices when the cost of fertilizer is still unaffordable. Honorable Sankok, one minute. You know, I have to remind you because I know sometimes you speak for too long. Choose today where, which side you will be, whether the side of Kenyans or the side of the rock government that is... Uh, uh, trampling on you know, Kenyans uh, honorable brother, you, honorable you, you go to speaker the, the issue of fertilizer. let me think if you bring other issues it does not help let me think you genuinely want uh, the issue of farmers let's not dramatize let's deal with the matter of fertilizer let's not uh, digress please let's not politicize no fertilizer no reduction of prices of fertilizers no budget in this house and I think members will choose where they will be because Kenyans are watching whether you will support our farmers or then you will support the government by passing the budget that does not have uh, uh, money to, uh, to subsidize the price of fertilizer, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, and I thank Honorable Afrel Keter for bringing up this issue because this issue is very emotive. It is the rainy season. Kenyans are now planning. In Narok, we are the highest producers of uh, barley second highest producers of wheat which consume the highest number of uh, bags of fertilizer and the last time we made a bumper harvest in Narok was when William Ruto was the Minister of Agriculture and we actually exported our barley all the way to South Africa and Tanzania that was the first and the last time honorable speaker okay. so you can see the effect of lower prices of fertilizer on production honorable speaker we must uh, reduce the prices of prices, increase production, and reduce the prices of food. Okay, Honorable Nikal, Dr. Nikal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I also take this opportunity to actually uh, appreciate and thank Honorable Keter. Mr. Speaker, there are times when matters of national import importance are before us that we should strive to remove politics so that we come together. This is the issue of food for Kenyans. The price of fertilizers should go down. And that is something we support. Honorable Kotera has asked for the correct thing. But I'll just tell my colleagues, if I, the best in such circumstances is just leave out politics completely and talk about the issue. We all know that when it comes to politics, logic disappears. So if we then bring a lot of politics, even those who would support actually stop supporting because of politics. So the best approach whenever we have an issue of this nature is to cut politics out, think of Kenyans, and support the idea. I think that we should ensure that the prices of fertilizers come down. Thank you. Honorable Mr. Imaga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank... Uh, Alfred Keter for bring this matter. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the critical thing here for us who come from other regions who, who, who do not depend on fertilizer is the fuel, prices of fuel. If you can reduce the price of fuel, all the, all the other uh, items or goods will go down because production of food and, and services depends on the fuel. So I think we should also address the issue of fuel, fuel prices. Honorable Pukose. Uh, Nashukuru Mweshimiwa Speaker kwa kunipa fusa hii. 
ili kuchangia kwa ile swali ambalo lilimehusisha me, mheshimiwa Keter ambapo anataka chairman wa agriculture mheshimiwa Tiren aweze kuleta jibu kwa hii nyumba kuhusu kwa nini bei ya fertilizer imebaki juu na nimefurahi mheshimiwa wangu amesema katika serikali hii kuna cartels na mimi nafikiri wangu tu ameweka ameonyesha kidole maale sio sawa cartel siko kule state house na kule ndio tunataka tujue rais lazima ashukulikie kwa ile kipindi imebaki ahakishia kwamba bei ya fertilizer imeteremka chini ili order we have said we restrict ourselves to the matter let's not throw unnecessary Please. So if, if you do that honorable Sankok Asande honorable Sankok honorable Sankok honorable Sankok in fact it is lucky that I had given you an opportunity had you spoken like that I'd make sure that you don't get one because we have to restrict ourselves to the matter that has been raised anything Speaker. that is a side show is unnecessary so please order honorable Sankok order honorable Sankok So bwana speaker nimeona mheshimiwa Kutunya amesema sijui nafuta upande gani na ni mzuri tufute upande ya mkulima upande ya mkenya wa kawaida tuhakishe kwamba wana chakula ya kutosha bwana speaker niliona sehemu zingine za Kenya iko na iko na ukame mkali na tulikuwa tunaona hata watu hawana chakula yet sisi kama kaunti ya Transoya baada hata tuko na mahindi katika kwenye stores so tungependa serikali angalie kwamba mkulima anapata afueni kwa mambo ya fertilizer asante bwana speaker honorable Ashali and the honorable chair uh, the departmental committee I'll give I'll give two from this side but let's have honorable Ashali then I give two here and then we come back to 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 the chair uh, thank you honorable Because speaker it's something that we must wind down honorable speaker those of us who live uh, uh, near the Ugandan border we are really embarrassed that uh, foodstuffs are cheaper in our neighboring country in Uganda and yet uh, foodstuffs in Kenya are very expensive honorable speaker the reason why when you go home to campaign and you find so many young uh, fellows who are actually supposed to be in farms uh, doing something to uh, produce food is because today it's an economical to do agriculture because the prices of fuel uh, that will run tractors is expensive the cost of fertilizer is expensive and therefore uh, the young men who should be doing agriculture have decided to now uh, uh, hang around so that they can uh, get one or two shillings from uh, politicians honorable speaker i am embarrassed that i put this government in place I contributed to the formation of this government and I am embarrassed. I am highly embarrassed and how I wish that the five months remaining end as soon as possible. Uh, the Honorable Sotsi. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I think I must uh, thank uh, Honorable Keter for bringing up this matter. Because, uh, Mr. Speaker, as uh, Honorable Nikala said, the issue of increased fertilizer prices does not know which political formation you support or which side of the political divide you are. It is affecting all of us. It is affecting the people we represent here. So if you try and uh, politicize such an important issue and uh, try to gain political mileage out of it, I think that's very unfortunate. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I brought a question to this House uh, about six months ago on the issue of fertilizer and on the issue of uh, procurement malpractices of uh, Okay, so order, order, order. Uh, Honorable Kavai Adagala. Ah, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, the, I want to congratulate Honorable Ketel. This is timely, and this is the time farmers are preparing to plant their 
the maize and other foodstuffs. I think this is quite an order, Mr. Speaker, sir. The farmers down there are hurt. Some are still having maize in the stores, and others are preparing land ready for planting season. The rains are here with us. I was in the village the other day, and it is raining heavily down there. So I support this. Prices of fertilizer should be reduced to enable farmers prepare their land quite in, on good time and, pre, and plant. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I support this. Prices of fertilizer should come down, and even the seedlings for farmers to plant. Okay. So the chair, agriculture, uh, there are things I would like, uh, I mean, that would be only proper for you to do. No, 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 no more, no more. We have order, uh, order, 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 order members. Let's, let's first hear from the chair, agriculture, uh, what he has to say about when he's able to respond to the original statement by the member for Molo. Because what Honorable Keter has done is reignite a statement that had been requested before. How, what is the status? And then you can, you can proceed and make your statement. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And first and foremost, I would like to thank Honorable Keter, my brother, Honorable Keter, MP Nandi Hills, for the question that he has raised today. And uh, I think also I would want to mention that it had been raised by Honorable Kuria for MP Molo. And we had requested the Ministry of Agriculture to be able to give us feedback on the same question. But up to date, we've not received any, anything from the Ministry of Agriculture. But we have, uh, we have someone to the committee next week on Tuesday. So I hope he will come because we don't, we've also had a lot of challenges because when we, whenever we invite him to come to the committee, he, never, he normally does not, uh, does not appear and he has been quite busy. So I would also want the House to help us also make sure that he is there so that he can be able to answer some of these questions. But I also want to mention one or two things on the same matter because it's a very important matter. And I think, as a, a honorable member had said, Ototsi, this touches so many Kenyans because we have a number of, of MPs here who represent people who use fertilizer. And, uh, and also, we need the fertilizer for purposes of maize. And, and maize is a staple food in this country, which I believe when we don't have enough maize or we don't get enough uh, food in this country, it's going to be very exp expensive for, for, for the for the government or for our people because of tax that we'll have to import or rather we'll use to import. So I also want to take this opportunity to also uh, put it clear that if fertilizer was 2,500 shillings last year and the price of maize now is 3,500, you can imagine how much Kenyans are going to buy maize next year if the price, uh, price of fertilizer remains at, at 6,000 or almost 7,000 shillings, which I think the government is not treating issues of agriculture to the importance that it is supposed to be treated. And I'll start by bringing up the issue that if you look at the budget in agriculture, we are only getting about 3.1% uh, of the budget goes into agriculture. Without them considering that uh, agriculture is the backbone of this economy, of, this, the, of the economy of this country, and Kenya being a signatory of Maputo Declaration, where there's supposed to be a minimum of 10% that's supposed to go to agriculture. So I think that should actually go towards so that we are able to support the farmers. I want to talk of the addendum that has been brought to our attention and, and <clears throat> What's your point of order, Honorable Elisha? Mr. Speaker, I think uh, the Chairman of Agriculture is going round and round and round. It should be more pragmatic and tell the country that the prices of, agri uh, of uh, fertilizer went up when the deputy president was a minister of agriculture and he himself imported fertilizer to this country. He must be more serious. He cannot be going around without explaining the historical position now, order. why the price of fertilizer has order, been... Has order, 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 Elisha. Now, I, I, I think this is, a, this is exactly the same thing we were saying that um, the unfortunate bit is when you politicize an extremely important issue for the farmers and for the citizens. Now, uh, I do not know really whether the, the, the chair I have not finished. Thank you. been interested in Thank you, Honorable that. Speaker. But and like I said earlier, Honorable Speaker, let us, treat, let, us, let us treat this thing of fertilizer 
what, what, what is your point of order, Honorable? Indeed, uh, indeed, indeed. In, 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 did your what's your point of order mr speaker i was just uh, trying to catch your eye because i've seen majority of the people who have contributed are largely the large scale farmers but i represent here majority of small scale farmers mr speaker uh, and i want to say how does that become a point of order Ms. I, you see, I, any point of order is when something is out of order so are you suggesting that by not being given an opportunity, it's out of order? I don't think so. Mr. But, Speaker, but, but I thought it's an opportunity but, but, for me but, to contribute. But, but then do it in half a minute. Okay. So that I go back. To, because I would have actually ruled you out of order. Okay. But, but just half a minute. Okay. Mr. Speaker, in our language, we say that uh, wealth is what remains after you are fed. In uh, trying to paraphrase the Kikuyu uh, saying, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, food comes from agriculture and from our farms. And the prices currently of fertilizer, Mr. Speaker, from where I come from and across the entire country of Kenya, is unaffordable to many, especially small-scale farmers. And Mr. Speaker, this percolates even further. The current scenario of our country is that we import more than 200 billion worth of food, Mr. Speaker. Your half which... a minute is gone. Thank you. So, no more point of orders. I realize it's actually point of arguments and point of contributions. So, so let's let's leave it, honourable members. Thank you, thank you very much, honourable speaker. Honourable members, let us allow the chair. Let us allow the chair. Thank you, thank you, honourable speaker. Let me proceed from there. <coughs> thank you, thank you very much. Like I was, I, I was let's actually. Let's hear what the, the chair has to say first. Thank you, thank you, honourable speaker. I also wanted to add to it that we had requested and we had talked to the ministry and. The information we had is that we had we had requested for about 15 billion to be able to sort out the issue of subsidized fertilizer in this country especially at this time when fertilizer prices are very high and the cabinet has not given a feedback which we should expect that they should move very fast but what the committee did and i want to applaud the members of uh, my, my my members in the committee of agriculture is that we were able to do the supplementary and make make some adjustments where we put in 1.4 billion to be able to subsidize fertilizer so out, that as we await order. cabinet's decision out of order. so what we want is that out we of want order, honorable Pukose, out so we of want order. i'm not uh, going to allow you please protect so, me honorable speaker so I'm that i can be able you. to proceed uh, let, uh, order 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 honorable chair honorable Pukose, order honorable order honorable Pukose. i have i can confirm to you that I'm not going to allow you. So don't waste your time because you cannot be unruly in the house and expect me to listen to you. So I'm not going to listen to you. Proceed, Honorable Chair. I'm not out of order. Proceed. Proceed, Chair. Have you finished? All right, thank you. Please, please. I'm normally very patient when people are talking. Please, I would request the house, please. Now, <clears throat> now like I said, like I like I've just said that we, we in the committee we were able to put 1.4 billion to be able to subsidize fertilizer for farmers as we are waiting for cabinet to as we we are waiting for cabinet to make decisions because we had requested for 15 billion. So what honorable I was Gikaria. saying in short is that there what is, is a dead Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, there, thank there, you, please. thank you, honourable speaker. Honorable Speaker, what I wanted to do, and I think that is what exactly what is out of order? the Chair of uh, Agriculture say. Honorable Speaker, this is not the time of asking questions. This is the time of the committee putting money either in the supplementary and in the budget itself so that we can be able to address some of these issues. And I, I'm happy that uh, the, the Chair of uh, Agriculture has said that in the supplementary they have put $1.4 billion which this house should be here in the, our numbers to try and support what the chair and his committee has done. So that is, and that is the only way we can be able okay, to honorable speaker that, that is to I'm address saying, some of these Honorable issues. members, Thank you, honorable. you are rising here saying that there is something which is out of order, yes. but actually what you are doing is basically contributing. No, I don't order, honorable, because I have just told you that I'm not going to give you. So don't, don't bother. You know, there is something that you cannot do, honorable, because you cannot bully the speaker you have no you have no capacity so this, this is an issue you have had your time to contribute allow other members and the chair to respond so so uh, and don't uh, honorable pukose of course i'm not going to remove you from the house 
but I might ask you to relocate so that you do not interfere with my, my, my concentration. But do you want me to try it, Honorable Pukose? Do you want me? Did, did I hear you saying that I cannot? You know, I can try it with you because it has never done, it been done in the house. I'm going to ask you to go and sit very far from the speaker, and I, I don't think you are going to, to, to have any power to reject. But so, please, Honorable Pukose, you have had your opportunity, you have spoken. Let us allow the, the chair, and the chair was bringing out, this is an issue that we need to resolve. Now, if we start politicizing or heckling each other, it does not help. So the chair, please, can you tell us this? When is it that you are going to respond to the statement? That's a very critical thing. You have brought many, many issues, yes. including the, the budget matters, which is, which is fine. But, but, but eventually, please say when you are able to respond. Because you have said the CS is going to be before you on Tuesday. Yes. Are you able, therefore... To table the report or I mean to respond to that statement on Thursday next week yes that that is very good no so, Thank you. so we have achieved something yes so I just wanted to add that about the uh, budget <clears throat> what the committee did about the supplementary is that we were able to put in 1.4 billion in terms uh, for, for the fertilizer subsidy as we await for cabinet so what I'm uh, putting it clearly is that we have received an addendum from Treasury, and I think we are going to reject it so that we are able to support farmers. And I'll request members, especially members who represent people who are farmers, please be with us so that we make sure that we pass what is going to support our farmers. Okay. Thank you very much, and may God bless you. All right. I think that is a matter that is resolved. So please, we can... And I took uh, quite some time, honorable members. I gave quite a number of you yes. an opportunity to speak because I realize this is, of course, something which is very... Uh, critical uh, to the economy of the country. So let's go to the next order. Order number eight, the Public Debt Management Authority Bill, National Assembly Bill number 36 of 2020, resumption of debate. The honorable members, as is usual, whenever we get to, to resumption of a, a debate, we always look out for members who had contributed and had balance of minutes. This particular, the Honorable Fabian Muli, was on the floor. He had a balance of eight minutes. Should he be willing to proceed with it, uh, I would be happy to give him the opportunity. Is he in the House? Doesn't seem so. So then we go to the members who have not contributed and would wish to contribute. Honorable Makali Mulu. Yes, Honorable Dr. Makali Mulu, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Which chairman now? Ah. Mr. Speaker, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to start by appreciating uh, Honorable Sako Bunyasi for this important uh, bill, the bill on uh, public debt management authority. Mr. Speaker, you must have realized that all of this week there has been a serious national conversation on uh, issues relating to public debt. And this shows how important public debt is important to Kenyans. Honorable Speaker, just as an introductory remark, we must realize that the reason why we have public debt in any country or the member for Red Debates, is because, Honorable Speaker, you you cannot uh, please can you please uh, people are quietly take your leave spending Pro proceed you are all interfering with the free flow of uh, you know please you know, let members let's let's give each other opportunity you know i thought to each other. i thought mr speaker you had given people enough time to score their yes. burger points why are they harassing serious business like this proceed the honorable dr mulu so honorable speaker i was saying the reason why countries have to report on public debt is because every year as we plan for our expenditure, as we plan for our programs and uh, projects, Honorable Speaker, you find countries, Honorable Speaker, would always spend more than they are collecting from their own resources through taxation. And Honorable Speaker, over time, so long as you spend more than you collect, and if you come to a personal level, so long as you spend more than your income, obvious that a deficit must be met through borrowing. And that's why you see over time, this country has accumulated 
public debt to the tune of about 8.2 trillion, Honorable Speaker. So, Honorable Speaker, the reason why this bill becomes very important is because we are almost at a level where we are eating over 70% of our GDP uh, being the GDP public debt ratio. What that means, Honorable Speaker, is that there is need then to think about how do you continue managing public debt. And I think that's what this bill addresses. This bill, Honorable Speaker, was published in uh, around 2020. It has taken a lot of time before it lands to this House for debate. So one must now appreciate the fact that now we have the opportunity to debate this bill, Honorable Speaker. This bill, Honorable Speaker, comes up with what we call an institutional framework on how to manage public debt. And why it is very important, Honorable Speaker, because one of the questions we have been asking ourselves over time is how much is our public debt as a country? You have seen this week, Honorable Speaker, where some are saying it's 11 trillion, others are saying it is uh, 8.2 trillion, others are saying when you add public uh, pending bills, it's about 9.7 trillion. And why is this happening? It is happening because we don't have a one stop kind of shop where you can get these figures and get these figures which with authority that the person who will be issuing these figures is someone who has all the data we require and can actually justify the figures. And that's why I'm saying this, this really, this bill becomes very important. In terms of measuring public debt, Honorable Speaker, you realize that the conventional way of reporting on public debt is you leave out things to do with guaranteed, uh, guaranteed debt and you leave out issues to do with the pending bills. Honorable Speaker, the reason why you leave this out is because guaranteed debt is debt which is owed by parastatals and other institutions which are government institutions but not directly through the, the Treasury. And what that, what that means is the government comes in through Treasury just to guarantee and say that in case this money is not repaid, then Honorable Speaker, the government can come on board and make that payment. The question is, Honorable Speaker, you know, Honorable Speaker, it means we'll have taken that responsibility to pay. So, Honorable Speaker, when it comes to measuring public debt, that's why we see we leave out assuming the concerned bodies will be able to pay on their own. We also don't include pending bills when we are reporting on public debt in a conventional way, Honorable Speaker, because of the same reason. But the truth of the matter is these are obligations which, in case anything goes wrong, the government will have to pay. So, Mr. Speaker, if we had such an authority in place, you'll be able to say how much is public debt as reported in our books, how much is guaranteed debt as reported through those other organizations, and how much is pending bills. So that at the end of the day, we have a totality of how much the government should be paying. And to me, I see this, this authority being very important, Honorable Speaker, because they will be able to tell Kenyans at any point in time, this is how much we are owed as Kenyans. This is how much we are paying in terms of principle. This is how much we are paying in terms of interest. This is how much we are expected to pay over time. And even be able to tell Kenyans, this is the repayment period for this, this, uh, this, this loan. And say, even when you finish paying, then this will be the total in terms of how much was paid in principle and how much was paid in interest. Mr. Speaker, you know we had a very interesting debate in this house when we are raising the ceiling to nine trillion. And the debate, Mr. Speaker, was allow us a room of nine trillion so that within that room, Honorable Speaker, we can reorganize our we can actually re restructure our, our loans so that we have more of concessional loans as opposed to commercial loans. And with that understanding, Honorable Speaker, we went ahead and allowed Treasury to have the nine, the nine trillion ceiling. Whether we achieved that objective of reorganizing our loans in terms of commercial and concessional is a question for another day, not today. The other matter which is critical, Honorable Speaker, and which I think this authority will have to address, Honorable Speaker, is the issue of how the debt is applied. You know, Honorable Speaker, every day we are talking about public debt. But has any Kenyan taken time 
to map the programs and projects in this country where this debt is being applied, Honorable Speaker. And the issue is, could we be experiencing skewness in terms of application of this debt? Because when it comes to the payment of the debt, Honorable Speaker, every Kenya is a key player in the paying of those debts. Honorable it, Quaid, hold in on. terms of there will be tax. So even as you complain about this issue, hold Honorable on. Speaker, it will be important that this authority now, what I'm having in mind, once we, pass, we approve this bill, Honorable Speaker, we'll have an authority which Honorable Speaker can say, for the money we have borrowed the, over the last five years, these are the projects and this are, is where they are located in Kenya. On this basis, Honorable Speaker, we can discuss effectively issues of equity. Whether every area of the Kenya is benefiting from these loans because we will all pay the loans. The other important issue, Honorable Speaker, which this authority, I hope we will be able to address, is the issue of whether we are getting value for money. Honorable Speaker, the law demands. If you look at the Public Finance Management Act, Honorable Speaker, it says, whatever money you borrow in this country, it must first of all get to the Consolidated Fund in Kenya, and from there you disperse. Of late, Honorable Speaker, we have heard of loans where you will sign the papers, and what we see is either loaning materials coming into Kenya, things are done outside there. What that means, Honorable Speaker, is as a country, we don't have a total control over this loan. With this bill passing, Honorable Speaker, we'll have an authority which ensures that all the money borrowed, first of all, gets to our consolidated fund for purposes of audit at the right time. And then you can disperse the loan from that fund. At the end of the day, Kenyans will be getting value for money. Last but not least, because of time, Honorable Speaker, is the issue of evaluation of the programs we are going to fund. We'll have an authority which, from a technical perspective, can conduct proper appraisal of projects can conduct visibility studies of all those projects and you see whether these projects will be able to repay themselves over time. Because, Honorable Speaker, the issue of intergenerational equity when we are borrowing is very important. We should make sure that if we borrow for 20 years, by the time we reach the 20th year, Kenyans have started benefiting from such a program which have been implemented, and in that case, then, the future generations will not be overburdened repaying loans which were not able to generate an income for the country. So we'll be growing our national cake, and the income coming from that growth, then we'll reduce loan payment, and at the end of the day, we'll have sustainable loans, which to some extent are self-servicing. And I Very well. So... In the order, uh, again, I don't know uh, why Ole Sankoki is always top on the list, but uh, would you mind uh, being brief this morning? I cannot be brief, Honorable Speaker, because there is time allocated to everybody. But I'll finish uh, uh, before that time elapses, Honorable yes, Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, don't get worried when I'm always no. on top of the list, oh, oh. because... Because uh, I, have no reason, I come, I have no reason to get worried at all. I come before so, you, so, Honourable Speaker. So I want you to contribute now. And leave. You are actually spending a minute of your own. And time. I leave after you, Honourable Speaker, so that I earn from my sweat. M maybe as directed I, I by the think member. I might actually, so that you can know. Honourable Speaker, I, I might actually have death. to give someone else for the time being, as you reorganise yourself. No. So proceed then. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. <laughs> The Public Debt Management Authority Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 36 of 2020, is very important and is uh, in this House in the right time, Honorable Speaker. And I hope all members in this House, irrespective of the political inclination that they may have, will support this bill because this debt burden in this country is burdening Kenyans, Honorable Speaker. You can imagine that a child who will be born today or a debt of 136,000, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, it's unfortunate that uh, we will have to pay all this debt, all of us, irrespective whether the money borrowed was used properly or was used wrongly, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, it's unfortunate because those who are in the management in government, Honorable Speaker, who are supposed to implement projects that will give us value to, for our money, Honorable Speaker, are busy implementing projects that will not give us returns on investment, Honorable Speaker, yet we will pay these loans, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, and I'm sure this authority will look 
and to priorities, Honorable Speaker. Because for me, I believe where we went wrong and why we are not able to service our debt, Honorable Speaker, is because we decided to invest on investments that use capital, Honorable Speaker, what we call capital intensive investments, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, when you invest in capital intensive investment, it is because you have the luxury of time, you have the luxury of resources, we have resources that you can wait, Honorable Speaker, for them to give you returns on investment because you are not in hurry, because you are not poor, Honorable Speaker. But this country is a poor country, it's a developing country. It needs to invest on labor intensive infrastructure and investment, Honorable Speaker, so that we get returns on our investment as quick as possible, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, if you are rich, you let your money do the work for you. If you are poor, you let your muscles do the work for you. In this case, in our country set up, Honorable Speaker, we will allow the unemployed youth, millions of them, to work for us because at the moment we are not uh, uh, a developed country, we are still struggling as a country, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, a case in point is where we have invested on the expressway, Honorable Speaker. You're spending $80 billion on the expressway. And this expressway will assist 1% of Kenyan citizens who are traveling to JKIA, Honorable Speaker. If we will have taken the $80 billion to invest on labor-intensive investment like affordable housing, Honorable Speaker, will be able to have constructed 80,000 units of two bedroom each in strategic locations of our, our cities, Honorable Speaker, because the government have land in prime areas, Honorable Speaker. And at the end of the day, we will be able to employ more people because each unit will require a carpenter, a plumber, a mason, five uh, young men, Honorable Speaker. Five times uh, 80,000 will have employed 400,000 young men to do the work for us, Honorable Speaker. But the expressway, which we have invested 80 billion, is using machineries. It is capital intensive. It will only be able to employ 3,000 people, Honorable Speaker. If we have invested in that labor intensive investment of uh, affordable housing, Honorable Speaker, which is one of the big four agenda of our president, then we will have the government will be charging rent, meaning it will have another source of income rather than increasing taxes on food, increasing taxes on fuel, and increasing taxes, Honorable Speaker, on fertilizer, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, so as a country and this authority, we'll have to look into our economic models. Which one will work? Is it the trickle-down economic model or the bottom-up economic model? Because that is the only way we can... Uh, be able to manage our debt, Honorable Speaker, and be able to service our debt. If you invest on labor-intensive investment, which is in the bottom-up economic model, then you'll be able to even broaden the tax base. You'll be able to bring so many people on board who are willing to pay taxes, Honorable Speaker, because they have the economic source of income, Honorable Speaker. The moment you have one million extra taxpayers, it means you have more revenue, which means you can be able to service your loan. But in the trickle-down economic model, where we invest in a few big corporates like uh, KQ, Honorable Speaker, thinking that they will pay taxes, and they end up being uh, a folder grounds for corruption and end up declaring nil in returns, meaning they will not even pay taxes, Honorable Speaker, we will not be able to, in, uh, to repay our loans, Honorable Speaker. So, Honorable Speaker, uh, this bill is here in this house at the right time, and we all support because, Honorable Speaker, our debt, the burden is too huge for Kenyans. Kenyans are now crying, hashtag reduce food prices. Why are they crying? Because of the burden of the debt that we have, Honorable Speaker, that we have to service to an extent that we don't have money left to subsidize fertilizers to be able to cushion the poor and vulnerable in our country, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, therefore, we support this bill and we will, uh, will, ad we will like the authority, the Public Debt Management Authority, to be able to, to advise the government on what type of uh, investment it will carry, not only to advise them on uh, the limit of borrowing, but also advise on uh, types of investment, model of economic uh, models, so that we can be able to have more people 
paying taxes and more money will be available for repaying taxes. Honorable Speaker, I support. Uh, thank you. Thank you, um, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to say a few words <coughs> on this bill. Uh, speaker, public debt is not a bad thing. So long as the debt is being utilized in productive sectors of the economy, which have a economic impact, and a country can be able to pay. No country can be able to achieve meaningful development without borrowing. According to World Bank <coughs> report on status of the world debts in 2021, the highest, the country with the highest debt is Japan, with the 257 percent debt as a ratio of GDP. In Africa, Sudan reads with the 210 percent of GDP, which is the highest in Africa. Kenya, we are at 70, and yet we are really complaining. But the whole thing is how the debt is being used, and can the country be able to pay the debt? Debt is a function of expenditure and revenue. When a country cannot be able to collect more expenditures, and it has huge expenditure, then we have debt. Currently, this country is servicing debt at almost 900 billion, which is a huge, a huge chunk of money which you are collecting. Because we are collecting around 1.6, and we are paying around 9 billion, leaving us with only six, uh, seven, 700 billion, which 600 billion is used in paying uh, 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 salaries and other recurrent expenditures. Uh, Honorable Speaker, this House cannot run away from the debt issues in the country. Because should be with Parliament, just like all other miscellaneous uh, regulations, um, subsidiary law should come to both Houses of Parliament. Remember that uh, relationship between landlords and tenants are highly regulated or dealt with at the local level. Um, there is a role played by the county governments insofar as this relationship is concerned, collection of taxes, uh, related, uh, things to do with uh, licensing of these properties and uh, designation of where is uh, residential and what, where is a business premise. All this should be um, uh, involved county government. The best way to involve county government is to involve this Senate. Is the role of this Senate insofar as ensuring that the role of the cabinet secretary is, uh, is, 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 is checked by parliament. So it shouldn't be just national assembly, it should be parliament itself, both houses of parliament. Madam Speaker. I beg to second. Honorable Senators, I now propose the question that the Landlord and Tenant Bill, Tenant Bill, National Assembly Bills number, 20, number 3 of 2021 be now read a second time. Senator Olekina Ledama. Madam Speaker, uh, I thank you. Let me um, begin by saying that I rise to support the Landlord and Tenancy Bill 2021, a National Assembly Bill number three of uh, 2021, and state clearly that it is quite timely 
But as I read through the bill, I find that there are very, very important things that have been omitted. I have um, skimmed very fast through the bill, and I've looked at the way the bill has been drafted, and it is mostly to protect landlords. You know, in most cases, Madam Speaker, in all developed countries, there are legislations which are developed to ensure that even the tenants themselves understand their rights. In this bill, Madam Speaker, the tenants' rights are not clearly defined. One of the things which I find a bit contradictory in the bill, which I'd like to point out directly, uh, begins with the issues of the tenancy agreement. It states very clearly, if you re look at section 17, it says that these are the general provisions relating to the tenancies. It says that the rent payable for any premises shall be determined by mutual agreement of the parties to a tenancy agreement. Then the second clause contradicts the first statement, where it says, 17.2, it says, where an agreement cannot be reached by the parties at any time during the tenancy, the tribunal, on reference to either of the parties, shall determine the rent payable for the premise based on comparable or similar lettings. Madam Speaker, my concern with that second um, clause is that if the rent payable is supposed to be of mutual agreement, where do we then say, no, if we cannot agree on the rent payable, we go to a tribunal for the tribunal to tell us? That is actually saying that we have such a big shortage of properties that a tenant can be able to rent in this country that they have to rent that. So because they are not in agreement, they will now force the owner, the landlord, to be able to go to the tribunal for the tribunal to determine how much should be paid. I find that a bit contradictory. And I, I, I would actually request the majority leader who has moved this bill to consider removing that clause or amending that clause to make it very simple that where there is a mutual agreement, this is a covenant. It is between two parties. You don't want to antagonize any of the parties by bring a provision that says, now, a third party who has got no interest in that building. Remember, I spent a lot of money to construct that building. I decided that I'm going to pay X amount of rent, uh, to charge X amount of rent. If you are the tenant and are looking to come and stay in my building, you should come to my building. We agree together on how much should be paid, but not refer back to the tribunal for the tribunal to determine and say we'll take a sample of the area and force you the landlord who instead of putting a tile that cost 300 shillings per square meter you put one that cost about 10,000 shillings per square meter but you are now forced to, to pay or to charge what the neighbor who only used the tiles for 300 shillings is charging so i don't think that is fair to either the landlord or the tenant so um i would be seeking an amendment, and I hope that the majority leader can look in, into that and, um, and consider making those changes. Number two, Madam Speaker, if you look at section 18 of the bill, it states as follows. A landlord shall not increase the rent payable by the tenant or rented premises unless the landlord gives the tenant at least 90 days written notice of the intention to do so. We go back to the initial covenant. If you want to rent my premise. We agree that it's for a period of time, three years, and within those three years, I'm going to charge you X amount of shillings. So I've got no business increasing that rent within the first three years, Madam Speaker. Those three years, it will be sealed. So if I intend to renew the lease agreement, then at that point of time, we can now discuss whether I'm going to increase the rent or reduce the rent. So, Madam Speaker, I think this section 18 also needs to be amended. Because it says, number two, if you read 18.2, it, it further continues and says, the notice to be given under subsection one shall be in the prescribed form and shall specify the landlord intention to increase the rent and the amount of the new rent. That will only be necessary if the, the covenant period or the time that you've agreed that I'm going to reside in that, proper, in that property has lapsed. But in the event that it's within the period of the covenant, it is not necessary. 
So I don't think we should over legislate or make it difficult or create room for landlords to find ways to be able to exploit tenants. You know, with a kind of lifestyle, or rather the, the uh, living conditions in this country now where things are very expensive, people, middle class, or anyone, even us as legislators who are working, you, don't, you would not get an increase in your salary. So if you say, I'm going to be staying here for three years, I have a, co a contract with my company for three years, this is how much I should pay, and it will be able to help me survive, that should be the case. So that section 18 also needs to be relooked. In fact, if you look at the entire part four, part four does not take into consideration the interests of a tenant. It only looks at the interest of the landlords. Let me proceed further, Madam Speaker, and reiterate on one other very important issue relating to the tenancy agreement. Every time there is a tenancy agreement, there is always a deposit which is, which is paid. This deposit, most landlords in this country, you know, look forward to getting this deposit so that they can go and spend on their own issues. I think it is now time for us, and it behooves us as legislators, to be able to look at what happens around the world in terms of protecting that deposit. In countries like the U.S., where I lived for so many years, there is normally a law that governs the tenancy deposit. And there are two areas where you're supposed to protect that uh, tenancy deposit. One, it can either be a custodial or an interest-based um, interest tenancy deposit uh, security, where the landlord is supposed to protect that deposit in a government backed deposit scheme where if it's a government backed deposit scheme if you decide to make it custodial the custodial they earn the interest it pays them to be able to protect that deposit if it is an insured scheme then the agreement between the tenant and the landlord must clearly specify how that interest is going to be utilized or how it's going to be shared is it going to be um, 100 percent taken by the landlord whose that money does not belong to him or her or is it going to be taken by the tenant who has decided to put that money aside so that it can protect in the event that there is a, a you know something needs to be fixed in that house madam speaker i would have also hoped that this tenancy agreement would would either think of uh, um, a situation where we create it creates an escrow account I know in terms of escrow, mostly it relates to uh, mortgage schemes, but in this particular one, where in this country, KRA now requires a certain amount of money to be paid by the landlord as a tenancy uh, income, uh, in taxes. So I think it will be important for, for us to amend this legislation and factor in all those issues of the escrow. Because if it was a tenancy agreement and you don't have to pay any taxes to the KRA, then the escrow issue would not come into play. But today, I'm aware that even in our own offices, Senate offices, which are spread across the country, KRA requires us to withhold uh, 15, I think 15% uh, in, uh, taxes on the rent that we pay to our landlords. In the event that that money is withheld, you know, you know, KRA assumes that everybody is a tax agent. So, so long as you are doing, you're collecting any money, you automatically becomes a tax agent, whether you have signed an agreement with KRA or not. So, I think it is time for us now, when we are drafting legislation, to consider taking into consideration all these issues that will come in to dictate how the tenancy. Uh, agreement should be should be run. So um, I would be seeking uh, either the majority leader or the committee stage amendment. Or if if they don't, then I'll be bringing the amendments. One to define how the interest, the tenancy deposit, will be handled during the period of the deposit, whether it will be a custodial uh, account or rather the government uh, protected scheme or whether it will be an insured account. And the tenants, 
needs to know their rights. They need to be able to understand their rights. I, there's one thing that makes me happy here, and I think all landlords ought to be uh, alive to this fact that you cannot just evict a Kenyan in living in your property without the consent of the tribunal in the event that that tenant has not paid rent. You know, maybe he has not paid for one month or has, has got a tendency of uh, delaying in paying rent. Then you need to report that person to the tribunal. That is an issue that has been uh, brought up in, by this bill. Then you get a consent from the tribunal for you to be able to evict that person. It is also very important to note that in this bill, it talks about a duration where if the eviction is not carried out within a stipulated period of time, I think it is 60 days, then it laps. That person continues staying in that house. It can be extended if the landlord goes back to the tribunal and seek for an extension. But these are issues that the tenants and the landlords must remember, must be alive to. And I would really request that uh, as part of the tenancy agreement, the piece of legislation that deals with this, like this, the landlord and tenancy, if it becomes an act, should be attached to the tenancy agreement. So that when, or maybe it should be, um, it should be cited in the terms and conditions for rental. So that the tenant and the landlord are well aware of their rights. Madam Speaker, the other issue that I'd like to communicate on this matter has to do with Section 30. This is also another issue of subletting. The law, uh, as it's proposed, states as follows. A tenant may, with the consent of the landlord, assign premises to another person. It further continues and says, a tenant may give the landlord notice to terminate within 30 days after the date of the request made under subsection one, if the tenant requests of the landlord to consent to an assignment of the premises of and the landlord refuses to consent. Madam Speaker, these are things that we need not to over-legislate. These are things which need to be clearly defined during the time of signing the agreement. The agreement should be very clear that in my premise as a landlord, I do not ag agree, I do not approve any subletting. Then you as a tenant have a right to say since you do not want me to sublet, then I'm not interested in renting your property. I think when you now give room to, in Section 30, Madam Speaker, when you give room in Section 30 to say that you now go and seek approval from the landlord, and if he refuses, then you can then choose to leave the property, then you will be negating all the other uh, terms and conditions that you agreed upon. So I think to protect both the landlord and the tenant, the agreements must be clear from the onset that in this property, there's no subletting allowed. In this property, you can sublet, just notify us. But the terms and conditions continue being the same as the initial tenancy agreement. Madam Speaker, to conclude this, let me reiterate on the two issues that I raised. One has to do with the issue of how you secure the deposits. There are properties here and uh, where, you know, uh, tenants are required to pay about six months deposit, I mean three months, about six months deposit before they can occupy the premises. It could be about six million shillings. That is a lot of money. If that money is not protected, either one to be um, safeguarded in either a custodial or an interest-bearing account, then there are chances that by the time when the tenancy agreement comes to an end, there will be a big Mickey Mouse sort of like competition between the landlord and the tenant when the tenant wants to leave and get their deposit. We know we've heard of so many stories where tenants do not get their deposit or landlords make it very difficult to, uh, to release the, the, the deposit paid by the tenants. I think the tribunal Instead of the tribunal just being in every bill, you give them so much power. I think the powers that you should give them is the powers to be able to determine whether the premises or whether the tenants knew the terms and conditions of them let, uh, leasing the house. 
or leasing a, a property. Number two, to finalize, it is the issue of um, uh, the rights of tenants. Tenants need to know that they can live anywhere they choose to live in this country and that when they are in that house, the period that they have occupied that period, since they are paying for them to be in that house, it is assumed they should enjoy all the rights that any Kenyans can enjoy in their own private place. The, this business of landlords entering into the premises as they choose must also come to an end. They can only do that if they notify, and maybe this is an amendment we should put in, if they notify the tribunal that there is a challenge with that tenant and they seek approval for them to be able to enter the premises. The premises ceases to become 100% owned by the tenant, by the landlord, because there is a person who lives there who is paying for it. Otherwise, Madam Speaker, I fully support and I hope that the majority leader who moved this bill has taken note of the areas of concerns and they can be able to bring in some amendments to make it very clear. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Senator Sherrard gave Samson keep protich. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, this is a very important bill, the National Assembly Bill number 3 of 2021, the Landlord and Tenant uh, Bill. I think some of us who own property or rentals and also Kenyans who live on our property, we need the protection of the law. And I hope as the majority leader works very hard Madam Speaker, to ensure that there is expeditious handling of the National Assembly bills that originate from there, I wish the same could be replicated at the National Assembly whenever we have uh, bills that originate from the, from, the, from the Senate. And that has been our contention since we moved to court uh, the other time. So I really want and hope that the majority leader will ensure also the way we are prioritizing and giving uh, adequate and uh, really high level wisdom like uh, of Senator Ledama on the matters that before the House, and then the National Assembly also must give adequate uh, attention to our bill so that we complement each other. Uh, I think, uh, Madam Speaker, a few comments about this is a straightforward bill. These are things that has been done in terms of tenancy, uh, tenants and landlords. It's just we are establishing a legal framework that will guide and ensure that there is protection of the law. Because most of the people who own rental properties, residential homes and many other places, and now we have ownership of sectional properties where uh, their share of share, sharing of clubs, uh, swimming pools, stairs, or this open spaces within apartments in the city and other towns within the country, Madam Speaker, this uh, just guides and gives appropriate, and most of this should be done in good faith because at the end of the day, if you are the landlord and there is a tenant, then the engagement of tenancy agreement should always be done in good faith. Um, Madam Speaker, there is uh, the issue of uh, rent increment and the issue of reduction of rent increment. I think this became a challenge, Madam Speaker, especially during the COVID period. And uh, we saw a number of Kenyans lose their jobs and some of them could not sustain to pay rent. And uh, some of the unscrupulous landlords went ahead to increase rent. It is good now that the law has provided that at least 90 days uh, um, or 90 days, that is around three months, that when a landlord has an intention of increasing residential property and uh, other forms of property, that uh, you give adequate notice. And I think that is very important because uh, uh, one interesting thing in this country is that, uh, and I saw it somewhere with the issue of uh, increase in food prices, is that uh, people the, the income will remain constant be it salary, but the expense will keep going up. So you can imagine if somebody was paying 10,000 shillings for a, a property uh, or a residential home or where they live, and their maybe salary is around 30,000. But now that there is 
caveat or an opportunity of 30 day, 33 months, Madam Speaker, it can give an opportunity that person to relocate so that they can look for a better housing, a better place where they can afford. So I think this uh, stopgap measure is very important because sometimes when landlords want to, to frustrate you, they can wake up one day, especially landlords in our small towns in the villages, they wake up one day and say your house is no longer 1,500, we need you now to pay uh, 2,500. You can imagine the horror that uh, such a family needs to adjust with hard economic times. And even the reduction, we saw a number of uh, landlords, uh, 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 Madam Speaker, uh, decrease those of goodwill, especially during the pandemic across the world, especially in Kenya. And I think some of the landlords, because of the challenges that some of them even gave rent free months, others ensured, uh, Madam Speaker, that uh, there was a decrease and many other factors that contributed, especially during the pandemic. And, and Madam Speaker, I think it is very important that, uh, and, and I like the way the wording is, a landlord shall decrease the rent charge to, and that is close 21, the tenant, if the landlord ceases to provide any prescribed service with respect to the tenant's occupants of the rental premises. You know, Madam Speaker, landlords are very good people when you are moving to their houses. They will tell you, we will be now mowing your grass, we will be working on the cutting, uh, ensuring you, uh, they take care of weeding their flowers, ensuring that they wash your cabros. They will ensure that uh, we provide you security, the watchman at the gate will be collecting garbage. But after some time, when they are now comfortable, you have taken your money, you have paid deposit, you have paid uh, your, your, your maybe rent for maybe two, three months. But I'm sick of the, the landlord disappears. So it becomes a challenge. And I think it is very important because maybe even the payment of electricity bills and the water. So sometimes before you know it, when you were misled, in short, there was a misrepresentation because the landlord was excited and wanted you uh, to, be, to, to, be, to, to, to rent their property. And then they promise you heaven. But they can't deliver by saying, we'll cut your grass, we'll ensure the trimming of the fence, uh, weeding of flowers, cleaning maybe of the cabros, uh, providing security services, payment of electricity bills and water bills that will be factored. So when you are paying your rent, you know the service that will be provided, apart from the rental, there will be other additional services uh, that will be provided. So I think, and also, Madam Speaker, when you move in, they can say they want to come and paint your house. Maybe by the time you move in, because maybe an agency, you move to the property, and they tell you, uh, maybe in one month time, I will send a painter to come or fix a few, uh, a few, a few uh, fixtures within, within the, like, uh, like within, within the house, but they have not done it. And I think it is very important that uh, that one has been noted. That is clause 21. But as speaker of the powers and appointment of tribunal, I think those are procedural issues. And there is nothing much I can add. And even the powers that tribunal has, they have always had. And uh, this has assisted and especially in pro providing for litigation. Madam Speaker, uh, another clause 27, a landlord may by notice terminate tenancy if the landlord in good faith requires possession of, uh, uh, of premises for, for, for occupation. Uh, and I think the, the date for termination, if the landlord, the spouse of the landlord, a child or parent of the landlord, which is okay, the date in shall be at least 60 days. I think it would remain at, uh, at uh, 90 days, three months, so that you don't wake up, Madam Speaker, and you know the inconvenience of moving to a new house. Maybe where you live and where you work, were, there was proximity. But now, if you give only two months' notice, I think it is a better majority leader. Let's maintain at 90, 90 days uh, or uh, three months so that, uh, Madam Speaker, it is also convenient. You can imagine uh, landlord wants the, 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 the house maybe for the child of the spouse, which is okay. But I think the timeline, Madam Speaker, should be uh, 90 days. I think three months is more than sufficient to allow even you maybe where you live and where you need to relocate your children, the proximity to school, maybe to other public facilities, to your workplace was very convenient. But you will need, Madam Speaker, an adequate time so that even if you have to move your children to another school, or even if you, you, you know, it was more proximate to, to the church, uh, uh, the church, Madam Speaker, or a mosque. And you know, if you go far from the mosque or the, the church, your prayers might take long to reach heaven. So you will need to relocate, Madam Speaker, 
to, to where you, you are spiritual nourishment, access to utilities like supermarkets and many other schools, and the mosque or the church, Madam Sika, clause 28, a landlord may give notice of termination of tenancy if requires possession of the premises in order to demolish the, and I think this has been the biggest problem, Madam Speaker. We have found, and that is where creation of infrastructure, uh, Madam Speaker, which are called, you know, we have forest evictees, we have internal displaced people, but nowadays, the biggest menace in this republic, Madam Speaker, especially in this city, is what we call infrastructural evictees, where either they want to demolish the premises that you are using or residential you are using to expand the roads. But how they do it, Madam Speaker, it is unfortunate. You wake up one day, especially in our cities, uh, houses have been demolished, homes have been demolished without a due regard of the law. And I think that is where the growth of infrastructural evictees, in fact, the threat to this country, Madam Speaker, is no longer the forest evictees or even political or IDPs, Madam Speaker. The biggest menace in this country is infrastructural evictees. And I think it is very important that, uh, Madam Speaker, it is, it is unfair. When you wake up one day, you find people want, it is good to build roads. It is good to build public utilities. It is very important to build hospitals. But also you must be bear, fair and have due regard to the law. And therefore, Madam Speaker, at least 120 days, which is, I think, four months is sufficient. So that we, unless uh, somebody has grabbed the land and there is an issue that they can demolish at night, I think as a country, Madam Speaker, we need to move away from this. And I think 120 or four months is very important so that we prevent the creation of infrastructural uh, evictees. You remember during COVID, there were people that were being evicted in Ruai, among other areas, even in the outside the, the city, <coughs> Madam Speaker. And therefore, I really want another aspect that uh, has become a challenge, especially to hustlers is uh, Madam Speaker, is the payment of goodwill, goodwill, goodwill payment. I don't know where that thing emanated from, especially in business premises. You go to Kisumu town, you go to Kisumu, sorry, Kisumu city, it's not a town. You go to Eldore city, Nairobi, and many other big towns. People are paying uh, goodwill payments, Madam Speaker. Oh, yes, oh, okay. <laughs> So, Madam Speaker, so what, what we are saying is that you can find somebody, a young person, maybe I've taken uh, money, uh, maybe youth fund, you want to uh, rent somewhere in, uh, around, uh, the, around, uh, around the city, uh, maybe the rent for that small space within, within the, the city or CBD is maybe 50000 or 40000 but the person who is inside there tells you, okay, pay me goodwill of $2 million. I think, I think this is what the, 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 the majority leader needs to look at because most young people cannot do business because of only one issue, what we call goodwill payment. And it is a, an issue that must be addressed once and for all because I know many people who are business people, Madam Speaker, and mostly young people, I don't know where this culture of payment of goodwill came from. It is in millions, Madam Speaker. I, I had a friend who wanted to get a property, uh, to, to lease a property, not even to buy, lease a property to do business within a, a lorry town. Uh, and he was being told to pay six million. So I was wondering, uh, how can six million, and these are startups, Madam Speaker, these are startups, businesses that we, we need to do. So the issue of, uh, uh, I think this will assist us in stopping and organize or uh, illegal demolitions, violation of many other uh, property, Madam Speaker, and many others. Madam Speaker, another fourth point, I think, uh, of course, I agree with Clause 29. Madam Speaker, you know, these estates, when you go to some of these estates in Nairobi, Madam Speaker, you, somebody has rented a house for residents. Before you know it, it is a club. People are clubbing there, Madam Speaker, People are, are doing prayers. People cannot sleep. I'm not saying prayers are bad, but you are living in a residential home. Before you know it, there is Kesha, Madam Speaker. Before you know it, there is a club, Madam Speaker. Before you know it, especially during COVID, Madam Speaker. So I agree that termination on the reasons of maybe illegal. Even Madam Speaker, there are estates where even drug trafficking, human trafficking is happening. And I think it is, it is important that to have these powers. And I really want uh, for termination notice Another one is um, damage. I think it is important. Madam Speaker, when some of the people who own property, <coughs> and uh, sometimes you, 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 you rent your property, uh, before you know it, Madam Speaker, 
you you go there you you do your routine check of course there is a right opposition to the the, the tenant that is there you reach there the, the 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 your property has been destroyed toilet appliances have been destroyed what we, I think it, those powers are very important, Madam Speaker, and especially when it's legal. I think on the issue of criminal elements, be it drug trafficking or uh, using as a bar in a residential area, I think also it's uncomfortable to, 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 to that. I think those are additional comments that I wanted to make. The fifth point I wanted to make is that um, assigning and subletting. I think most of, I think the, vic the biggest victims of this such insisted there was assignment and subletting, Madam Speaker, is normally uh, municipal houses or county government houses. You find uh, the father was living in that house, yeah? the father was living in that house, the, grand, the, 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 the grandfather, the father, the son, the son of the son. So some of the properties within uh, municipality, especially within cities, like here in Nairobi, Eldoret, where there used to be municipal houses, you will find there are five generations of one family have been living in a public house, Madam Speaker, but they should be the law that guides them, Madam Speaker. And you know, people, even when you go there, they have turned into homes, especially even railways, Madam Speaker. Uh, but, Madam Speaker, I hope uh, it is not within the chamber, oh, it, because it looks like there are people who are playing twisty. Madam Speaker, what I was making the point is it is important for the houses that are owned by county governments, formerly municipal houses. Municipal houses, Madam Speaker, I hope it will not affect the transcription of the answer for, to appear, <laughs> that they, but it's outside the, the, the chambers. Madam Speaker, I think what is important is that, uh, and you know when those people are being removed, you can imagine the police, especially the railway houses, many others, Madam Speaker, so it is always... I don't know how we'll handle this, but it is important. Before you know it, Madam Speaker, uh, they have even extended their houses. People who live in railway, railway houses. You go there, there is a railway house, but they have started building a babati. They have relocated all their clan before they, they have uh, want to take forceful uh, possession of such property. Finally, Madam Speaker, on the issue of uh, offenses, I think we need to be specific. Madam Speaker, I think we need to be specific uh, saying for fighting one month rent, I think to be punitive enough, Madam Speaker, is that uh, uh, it is important that offences become specific and become punitive so that it can become deterrent, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the final thing I wanted to make is uh, Clause 62. And I hope uh, the, I know the argument of National Assembly Majority Leader might say because the Cabinet Secretary is making uh, policy. is making policy. So they might say National Assembly, but why don't they say Parliament? And I think Majority Leader will, will need to amend this, that they may notice with the approval, because the issue of ownership of uh, rental houses and many others, Mr. Speaker, sir, I have noted the change on the seat, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that Parliament, and you know most of these issues are managed at the county government's level. Why would the uh, National Assembly having uh, what we call selective amnesia? And they know under Article 93, Parliament is both houses. It is the National Assembly and the Senate. And you know, they want to take us, you know, we went to court because of that simple issues, majority leader. Can you handle uh, in Kikau, Yawaze, with you, uh, National Assembly and the Senate? Because we wouldn't want to be fighting here. And for small issues, uh, we should be fighting for serious issues of lowering food prices in the country and uh, looking at serious issues of National Assembly. But I want to assure that the issue of uh, tenancy, landlords, will be handled very well under the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, government, Mr. Speaker, because most of the people affected by these issues, Mr. Speaker, are normally the hustlers. And we'll be looking at, and I really want to thank uh, the majority leader. This law looks very fair to the hustlers, and it looks very good for the hustler nation and also all Kenyans, uh, majority leader. And finally, Madam, Mr. Speaker, is to say this, we should process this law, but I request that the majority leader, there are so many gray areas, allow us to put input so that we can fine tune and improve. Uh, and I'm happy the majority leader today has, uh, has been in the House uh, and has listened to us uh, very keenly. I know Ledamo Lekina has been busy traversing the country doing campaigns of Kuzimia, but it is good to see him back in the house. 
uh, 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 Mr. Speaker, because uh, we still need to work and legislate for the better men of the country and to, 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 to look forward. What's it, Senator Ladama? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, is it in order for my good friend, Senator of um, Nandi? Is it Nandi or which county is it from? Which county? Is it Nandi? To impute improper motive that I've been traversing the country campaigning for Azimia Kuzimia when he knows very well that his own uh, team is referred clearly as Kenya Kwisha. Mr. Speaker, you know, this gentleman should, be, should restrict himself to debating on issues that relate to that relevance, the landlord and tenancy agreement, but not issues that he does not even have any, any meat to be able to, di to discuss. This issue, this, Mr. Speaker, you should find him completely out of order for, for discussing the issues to do with Kenya Kwisha, thinking that he's talking about um, Azimio La Umoja. Uh, Senator Charagay, strict yourself to the order. Yes, but, but, but Mr. Speaker, he's making it worse. There was no point of order there. What I just meant is that this law is good any presidential candidate should come, should tell the country what they will do. Because in this city, the biggest problem when you walk around this city, and it looks like Uzimia, I don't know what is happening, is that most of the people have challenges of tenancy and the issue of uh, property and rentals, Mr. Speaker. So uh, I support with amendments and uh, wish well, Senator Ledama. I didn't mean that uh, he has abdicated his duty. I, may, I wanted Baba to notice that you are campaigning for him. Senator Naomi Wako. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand to support this uh, very important bill uh, from the National Assembly, the bill on uh, landlord and uh, tenants. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as I was going through the bill, I realized that uh, this bill can help all the citizens um, and as we know majority of Kenyans and especially those who live within Nairobi uh, are tenants and for the landlords again this will guide them so that uh, they can be able to treat their tenants well so I support this bill uh, uh, because the bill as you can see proposes the introduction of price control over the rents based on market values. Previously, Mr. Speaker, um, the landlords have always been, you know, giving the rents the, 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 the price they wanted, uh, depending, they, they could even change uh, within no time and without even giving notice. But this bill then will help the tenants because the rent will be based on market values. Uh, that then uh, will help the tenants because nothing will be uh, extraordinary or nothing will be out of order.